Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa and I'm here at the Heises studio at HIC 2017. I'm here with David. David, please introduce yourself for everybody watching. Hi, thanks Jess. Um, I'm David Evans. Um, I'm a medical practitioner. I worked in health administration for most of my life, but I've had a sideline which has been health informatics, which I've seen grow over the last 30 years and develop into what it is currently. And we look around the stage today, we see an awful lot of things that are happening and a lot of things still not happening, but we're getting there. Okay, so what's not happening? Let's talk about that. Well, I think a lot of the foundational stuff still needs to be sorted out. Um, data standards, data uh, quality, um, terminologies, classifications. We, we've, we've got some initial work going, but we need a lot more codified information so that we can do the really smart things in the years to come with decision support and, and, uh, and, and, and making this system actually work to patients' benefit. So we keep talking about now being a time of great transformation in the healthcare system. Do you agree with that, or have have you been here before in the thirty in your thirty year career? In in some ways, we've been here before. We've I've lived through uh, Health Connect and NETA, and now we're going again with the agency. We've um, but there have been transformational changes. We're, we're moving from a paper record system in hospitals to a digital record system. I mean, it's it's still old software. It's still not the new over-the-horizon information systems that will be agile and uh, patient-friendly, but you know, it's, it's certainly a huge step forward from where we were, and it opens up new avenues of opportunities of, of future growth and future development. So I think, I think we're at a very transformational point, but as I said earlier to you, um, there are so many of those points. Uh, it is so complex. Healthcare is the most complex cultural system existing in humanity. I mean, as I said, we landed a person on the moon 20 years ago and we still can't get a discharge summary out <laughs> to, to, to a GP within a couple of hours. Um, still takes days. We, oh, the technology is not going to be the issue. A lot of it's going to be cultural. A lot of it's going to be foundational. Um, and there's some things that are just barriers to, to future, future movement. But um, Oh, it's an exciting time. It will be over the next decade because you've got genomics coming on, which, which are very much IT dependent. You've got uh, producing information for patients, which is understandable, which I think we're going to need linguistic help for. But the real critical issue that I think we're going to come up against, and I call it my brick wall, is clinical information systems need um, algorithms in which to uh, embed uh, clinical pathways and clinical guidelines. But we're publishing a thousand journals, a thousand articles a week. Um, it is physically and mentally impossible for any one practitioner to keep up to date. Right. And even if you start to put together expert groups of clinical governors and expert cardiologists in a room to sort out, as soon as they've got through one standard, the material's changed and more information needs to be analysed. So you get this exponential growth in work that they have to do. And at some point, physically, we just can't do it. Now, if we want to move that textual stuff, which is this is the best way to treat prostate cancer, into a computer algorithm that the computer then can keep track of and work behind, that is going to have to be kept up to date. So as we, as we improve and become more knowledgeable with the journals that are publishing, we have to rewrite the algorithms. And so we've got this sequence of things that we always will have to do to keep up. And at some point we're not going to. And somebody somewhere will get come to an adverse event and some legal person will say, well, why didn't you follow that latest guideline? Well, we hadn't updated the computer. We couldn't find it. We didn't know how to. So we're going to have to come together as a community, as a somehow managing. And I think it goes back to professionalism. I think we'll go back to doctors being doctors and and thinking about their role in society and 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 how they keep up to date and and you know we see super specialization people only know one small barrier of information they keep up to date but they don't know what the person next door is doing and so we have some unfortunate things happening but it's exciting but <laughs> it's terrifyingly fast and right. furious so tell me a little bit about um let's end on an optimistic note here um what are you what are you most excited about i mean what are some of the maybe the technologies or the direction that things are going um in digital health and informatics what are you excited about well the two two areas i briefly mentioned were, were one i call it oscar which is an online uh computerized algorithm system and and it takes text 
and converts them into algorithms and it keeps up to date with the clinical guidelines and they're of course sitting in a repository which computer systems can use, that's one. On a similar vein, an allergy server for the nation, sort of one place where we all put our allergies and, and reactions to drugs into one computer system and we, everybody's uniquely identified so we can say Joe Bloggs has an allergy to penicillin and every computer system in this room can access that. We don't have to keep a copy and a record and that's called source of truth. So we have one source of truth for allergies. And, and so those two things are very important. The other thing is the consumer. We, we don't really produce information for the consumers. We produce a discharge summary is really for a doctor, doctor to doctor communication. That's fine, it has a role. It's been going for hundreds of years. Um, we haven't produced a doctor to patient. Um, communication and that's an area I've done a poster on here but but basically how do we get junior doctors and and other people to write something that patients can understand do we include patients the photos of the doctors who treated them the photos of the drugs that they're to take the pink one and the blue one and the green one and so they know what they're doing what, what actually happened to them in hospital what do the results mean um, can we do it in other languages can we do it in Braille can we give them an audio copy if they're unable to read um, and how do we physically get it up in time? So can computers supply some of the linguistics, some of the terms? I mean, date of birth, for example, we, it's in the computer system already. Can we not just pull that out? The patient's name's there, um, the doctor's names, telephone numbers, uh, the drug, drugs have all been coded now, so they're there. So we could start building systems that provide this to the junior doctor or the nurse or the allied health person to produce a communication which says, Hi, Mrs. Smith, you've been in hospital for three days. You were treated by Dr. Jones, here's his photo. You were treated by this person. Um, you were to take these tablets three times a day. You didn't have a heart attack. You had chest pain, um, and we need you to come back again. Yeah, so, so really empowering the patient with the data. Absolutely, absolutely giving them information that they can understand and leads to better care and maybe stops them coming back into hospital. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, David, for joining us and for your time here today. It was right. wonderful to hear your perspective. It's tough, um, <laughs> it's tough but somebody's got to do it. I'm Jessica DeMassa here at the Heises Studio at HIC 2017. Thank you.